All right, so today what I want to talk about is a, a common type of knee injury called uh, a tear of the ACL, uh, which stands for anterior cruciate ligament. And uh, this is something you will hear about uh, in sports, typically basketball or football, sometimes skiing as well. Um, and that's because the ACL is very important for um, sports that require a lot of pivoting motions in the knees. Um, and so the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and take a look at the ACL. Um, it's uh, called the anterior cruciate ligament because it is in front uh, of the posterior cruciate ligament, which is another ligament of the knee in the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this patella here so we can uh, see the anterior. So here you can see the, the two uh, ligaments crossing. Um, this one right here that I've highlighted in green here is the anterior cruciate ligament and the one in the back is the posterior cruciate ligament. So <clears throat> the function of the anterior cruciate ligament is to prevent forward translation of the tibia, which is this bone right here, relative to the femur, which is this bone or the thigh bone. Um, so obviously as you can, you might imagine that the uh, anterior cruciate ligament is very important for sports that require pivoting motion because you need this ligament here to be intact if you're going to be moving your tibia relative to your femur. Um, so basically when this is torn, um, uh, what happens is the knee becomes pretty unstable when um, the tibia is pushed forward relative to the femur. And so what they'll do to test whether or not you have an ACL tear is you'll basically lay down on a, uh, a bed or a flat surface and the doctor will have you bend your knee and then they will pull on your tibia. They'll pull it forward um, to see how much it moves relative to the femur. Um, and that's called the anterior drawer test. It's also known as the Lachman test. Um, and so a positive sign is when the tibia moves an abnormal amount forward. So if you've suffered an ACL tear, there's basically uh, three surgical options you have, and um, there's also a non-surgical approach um, you may opt to go with. Basically, um, if you're not competing in a sport that requires a lot of pivoting motion at a high level, or you don't do, your job doesn't require you to pivot that much, and um, it's not necessary. It's not necessary for you to get an a, a ACL surgery. You still may want to get it done um, if you're a young athlete. But uh, if not, uh, what what you can do is uh, physical therapy will focus on building the muscles around the knee to make them stronger. And um, this is generally seen with pretty pretty good success rate. Um, people that just want to get back to you know uh, maybe swimming or running jogging, those kind of exercises don't necessarily need an intact ACL, and in fact you can get um, knee braces that uh, will help support your knee if you choose uh, not to get surgery. Um, however, if you're an athlete, and particularly an athlete that likes to ski or play basketball or football, and you want to get back to competing, um, you will need a ACL surgery to functionally compete again, <clears throat> at least at a high level. So uh, there's three surgical options. The first option um, is to use a cadaver graft. And what that basically means is you will be having somebody else's tissue um, placed into your knee. So um, what I forgot to tell you is that the surgery is called an ACL reconstruction because basically what the surgeon is going to do is they're going to put a new ACL in here for you. Um, and so the way they'll do that is they'll take tissue either from yourself or from a donor um, and they'll use that tissue to reconstruct a new ACL in the same spot where the old one was. So if you, uh, if you want to do a donor, um, uh, that's called an allograft, and basically what you'll be having done is um, they'll take usually the Achilles tendon, which is the tendon at the bottom of your calf muscle, um, and that's the tendon they will use from the cadaver, which is a very strong tendon. It's one of the strongest tendons in the body. So they'll basically um, take this from another person, a cadaver, um, and they will harvest that tissue, and then they'll go ahead and drill a, bow, uh, a hole in your tibia and a hole in your femur, and they'll drill uh, the two holes, and they'll stick the, the new um, ACL, which was 
the uh, Achilles tendon of the cadaver through your knee and they'll go ahead and stick a couple of screws on each side um, usually nowadays they're bioreabsorbable so the bone will reabsorb them over time and that'll be your, your new ACL right there um, generally this is uh, the option that's going to give you the least pain post-operatively um, however the downside is that in laboratory type settings these um, allografts uh, have been shown to have the least uh, strength uh, as compared with the autographs which are coming from your own tissue so <clears throat> there's a little bit of a trade-off it's uh, everyone's different and different people will choose uh, different options depending on what's important to them um, so the other two options you can have done are both autographs which means the tissue is coming from your own body um, and the first one is gonna be uh, they'll take your hamstring um, and your hamstring is actually composed of three different muscles um, and so they'll take the tendons of two of those muscles and they'll fuse them together and just like they uh, did with the Achilles um, allograft they would stick two holes one in your tibia one in your femur and thread the uh, the muscles through the tendons of those two hamstring muscles through the through the knee um, and so those two muscles, by the way, are going to be the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, which are shown here. Um, and it'll be the tendons of both of them. So they'll basically cut somewhere here. You know, they'll, they'll, re they'll get a little bit of this one, a little bit of this one. They'll fuse them together and then uh, stick them through. Um, and so the, the advantage to this procedure here is that, um, well, the, just so you know, the next one is going to be a patella a patellar graft so you won't get this um, pain in the front of your knee um, when kneeling which is what some people experience with the patellar graft um, however the downside of the hamstring graft is that um, these two tendons will not grow back so you will lose some of your hamstring strength generally it's said to be about 10 percent that's lost um, in this procedure um, so the last option and what's generally thought of as the gold standard just because it's been used the most over time or through the years is the uh, what they call the patellar tendon bone tendon bone graft so what that is is they're going to use this right here your patellar tendon which I'm sure you know is the one that the doctor taps with the uh, with the reflex hammer um, so what they'll do for this is they're going to take basically a piece of bone from the from the tibia um, and the middle third of the uh, patellar tendon and then they're gonna just like the other uh, two uh, procedures they're gonna stick that through your knee um, and the advantage here is that the bone um, from your tibia is gonna be a bone healing on bone which is generally thought of as uh, being better because it'll heal faster um, number one number two uh, this patellar tendon the part that's taken out will grow back over time um, and you're not gonna you're not gonna so you're not gonna lose the any strength in your hamstring like you would in the hamstring graft. Um, however, the downside of the patellar option here is that um, in some patients they experience um, pain in the patellar region after the surgery when they try to do things like kneeling down. They'll say it, it hurts um, in the knee. Um, so it again, it's a trade-off, but um, many uh, this is what you'll see as the most common. Uh, procedure for ACL uh, reconstructions is the patellar graft um, and generally um, these are the, the high profile athletes will use this so for instance you know, um, Derek Rose used a patellar graft um, Adrian Peterson used a patellar graft um, Tiger Woods actually went with the hamstring option but um, as you may know in golf the hamstrings generally aren't going to be as important as they would be in a sport like basketball or football where you need to be running backwards so, again, there's, uh, there's a pro and a con to each of these um, procedures, and for some people you won't even need to get the procedure done at all if uh, you don't need to return to high-level sports. So I hope I've shed a little bit of insight um, onto the three options, and uh, if you're going to have surgery, good luck. Uh, wish you the best.